Today, by popular request, I bring you the incredible John Petrucci. We're going to go back to the rock discipline tape and I'm going to point out some of the guitar technique nuances that John uses when he demonstrates the exercises but doesn't fully explain. But hey, that's kind of my job to do because they don't call me the speaking guitarist for nothing. The first thing we'll talk about is fretting hand endurance and stamina. And you can see when John is demonstrating the legato exercises from the tape, he tells you to practice them one minute each. The idea is to not stop. Do one exercise into the next a minute each. And that's a good piece of advice in general if, and that's a big if, you have two big fundamentals in place that John doesn't really point out, but they're very obvious if you know what to look for if you just watch his technique. And those two things are his fretting hand positioning and tension control. If you watch John's fretting hand carefully, you can see that his technique is absolutely textbook perfect. His thumb is behind the neck of the guitar as it should be. And more importantly, when he shifts positions, his thumb stays behind the middle finger or roughly between the middle finger or the ring finger of the fretting hand. It does not begin to point sideways towards the tuning pegs. And you can tell this because his hand doesn't begin to angle like this when he changes positions. And these things combined with general control over excessive muscle tension in the rest of his body enable John and other guitar players like him who have this down to play legato with incredible endurance and incredible stamina. Yes, playing stuff over and over for one minute each and gradually building up how long you can do it is a piece of the bigger picture, but it's resting on the foundation of having great positioning and great tension control. And that's what John is demonstrating, and even though he's not fully explaining it in detail like I just did. Simply playing things over and over with excessive tension, sloppy positioning, and bad technique is not only not going to build your endurance, it can very likely make you injured. And one way you can tell that John is being very relaxed when he plays is just observe the rest of his body. For example, Pay attention to his picking hand as he's playing those legato fragments and shifting up and down to different positions. Anytime you're making position shifts with the fretting hand, it takes a great deal of control to stay relaxed because the motion of moving towards the body or especially away from your body can very easily trigger tension in your picking hand, in your feet. It can cause you to hold your breath, to tense your jaw, or to tense your stomach, and those things are no-go when it comes to shredding. The point is, any fretting hand stamina or endurance building drills only work after you've built this foundation of fretting hand control first. Also what's really impressive is how John's technique, positioning, and tension control all stay perfectly consistent no matter if he's playing legato or playing picking licks. Notice also John's fretting hand wrist angle. It's always bent forward like this instead of bent backwards or instead of being flat like this. This allows his knuckles, his middle knuckles of the fingers right here, these knuckles, to be more open instead of being curled in like this. When your knuckles are curled like this, it takes a lot more force to do pull-offs with any kind of power or any kind of volume. But when you open them up like this, all of a sudden you get a lot more of the finger power and the wrist power behind any of the pull-offs that you do. So you get more volume from each note with less effort. And John has really has this down. That allows him to do legato cleanly and fast for long periods of time without getting tired. And John's ability to keep his picking hand relaxed as he's doing legato is a great example of something I call hand independence. This is where no matter what one hand is doing or how hard it's working, the other hand, and in fact the rest of your body, should not be affected by it. And I talk about this in much more detail with more examples in my technique breakdown of Paul Gilbert's technique. If you want to know more about it, check out this video right here. Now let's talk about John's picking technique. Of course, for the most part, his picking is pretty much flawless, which is why he's able to pick as fast and as clean as he does. There's a couple of exceptions that I don't quite agree with that I'm going to point out later on near the end of the video, but the main thing that I love about John's picking is how he's able to balance the wrist and the forearm when he plays. Many people, when they first learn about fast picking, they hear that you're supposed to use your wrist on individual strings and the forearm to change strings every time you change strings. Well, as I point out in my other tutorial on shredding with the wrist versus the forearm, which you can check out right here, that is not 
quite the case. And John is a perfect example of this. You can see in the run John is playing right here, most of the picking is done by the wrist. His forearm isn't moving all that much. And this is a very key detail. If he was doing it the way most people tell you to pick, which is change every string change with the forearm, his forearm would be moving back and forth like this because his pick is going back and forth between higher and lower strings many times. The problem with this is the forearm is such a large muscle group with so much mass behind it that it takes a lot of energy to get it in motion, then to stop its momentum, then to reverse that motion, then to stop that momentum and do that back and forth many times. If you try doing this at fast speed, it's going to get very tiring very, very quickly, even if you don't have excessive tension throughout your arm. So the best way I've found to think about fast picking that involves a lot of string changes is to use your wrist as much as possible and only use your forearm just enough to avoid the wrist from bending this way and getting into this awkward position that doesn't feel good and doesn't allow you to play well. Two, three, four. The same thing happens when he's playing the chromatic run. You know the famous one where he said, I was at 200, let's say that was difficult. Yeah, that one. You can see his wrist is doing most of the work, not his forearm. That is a big lesson to learn. And notice how whenever John does use the forearm, his elbow never really moves back very much because like it does for many people, when they move their elbow back, when they slide the forearm up and down the guitar too much, it's very easy to tense up your shoulder. It's also very easy to get into an awkward position with the arm because the contact point between the forearm and the body of the guitar changes. And that makes it very hard to play with any kind of consistency whatsoever. To make this point even more clear, check out this clip of John playing inside picking where the pick is going back and forth between two adjacent strings many times times and notice how pretty much all the motion is from the wrist and not the forearm. It will be incredibly difficult to play this pattern using the forearm because you would have to go back and forth between two adjacent strings literally on every single note. Now whether John thought long and hard about using the wrist versus the forearm or it just came to him instinctively, I don't know. What I do know is that he's obviously doing it the right way and which is why inside picking is a lot easier for John and other guitar players to get this piece of technique compared to other guitar players who are making it way harder for themselves than it needs to be. Another important thing to notice is how John's picking technique does not change. His motions stay very consistent from slow speeds to very fast speeds. Now John does point this out in the video himself. He says to watch your technique and make sure it stays consistent from slow speeds to fast speeds. The only reason I point this out here is because in my video on why slow guitar practice doesn't work for many people is because of this exact issue. Because many people when they slow down, they change their technique. They get away with lazy and sloppy and inefficient motions because hey, you're playing slow, you have all the time in the world to get to the next note, but once you increase your speed past a certain threshold or tempo, then it all falls apart. Now John clearly gets this and more importantly he practices what he preaches and that is why I want to make sure that you don't gloss over this piece in your practicing as well. Now look at this and I'm pointing this out because I know somebody is going to bring this up in the comments, but John's thumb is coming up over the fretboard when he plays the chromatic runs on the higher frets. Two things are happening here. First, obviously the frets up high are closer together so you can get away with more inefficiency, if you want to call it that, in your technique and still play great. And more importantly, the horn of the guitar, this bottom edge right here, is going to dig into your wrist if you try to bring your thumb too far down to keep it behind the neck of the guitar at all times. So sometimes keeping the thumb behind the neck of the guitar is simply impossible. And in the case of playing up high on the neck, you can also get away with it simply because the frets are closer together. So that is why John is doing that here and he's able to play as well as he does. Now check this out. And of course John's technique is looking great here, but it's not what he's doing that I want to point out. It's what he's not doing. Notice how he's not moving the pick with the thumb and index finger when he's doing string skipping on these bar chord arpeggios. It's mostly all 
all in the wrist and the forearm as it should be. And I point this out because I've seen many guitar players play this exact exercise from this video, and when they change strings, they're moving the pick with the thumb and index finger, and that is a huge no-no if you wanna play fast. So if you have this problem, if you're picking like this, whether it's from this exercise or anything else, unfortunately, you're going to have to undo this bad habit if you ever want to play fast and clean because it's simply impossible to keep your hands in sync and pick with any kind of power and articulation at high speeds if you're moving the pick like this. One more thing worth noting is John's sitting position. You can see throughout the video that whenever he plays anything even remotely difficult, he switches to have the guitar on his left leg, same way that I hold the guitar in these videos. And that makes it easier for him to play these licks fast and clean with less effort. So if you've been thinking that holding the guitar on your left leg doesn't quite look as cool as having it on your right leg, well, here's one example of a famous guitar player everybody knows who plays incredibly well, who holds the guitar on his left leg as well. Not to mention that when John plays live, you can see him elevate his foot and put it on a special wedge that's placed on the stage for him, and that puts the guitar in very similar position it would be in if he was sitting down. So one more point for sitting with the guitar on your left leg. Now earlier, I mentioned there are two things in John's picking technique that I don't agree with. Now of course, John is a phenomenal player and his picking technique works well for him, but there are two things about his picking that I don't think anybody should copy. The first of these is the same one I talked about in my breakdown of Paul Gilbert's technique, and that is his strict use of alternate picking. And I explain more about the technique I recommend instead of alternate picking, why I recommend it, and how to practice it in this video right here. The second thing I don't agree with in John's picking style is how he rests his pinky finger on the body of the guitar when he plays. I think that's a horrible idea to copy this for pretty much everybody. And the same goes for resting the other fingers on the body of the guitar as well. Here's why. When you're resting the pinky finger or the other fingers on the body of the guitar, it's very easy to press way too hard. And when that happens, you end up with a lot of tension in your wrist, your forearm, your upper arm, and your shoulder. And when that happens, you're done. You'll never play fast. It takes a huge amount of control to avoid pressing too hard into the body of the guitar. Now, some people, like obviously John Petrucci and Ingve to some extent, can get away with this because they know not to press too hard. But most people do not know what it's like when they're pressing too hard, and so they end up with all this extra tension that just cripples their ability to play. I recommend not touching the body of the guitar at all with the fingers that aren't holding the pick, and instead, if you want to use them for anything, use them to lightly touch the strings that you're not playing to keep them from making noise. That's how I use these fingers, but definitely not for resting on the body of the guitar. So there you go, another breakdown of another awesome player. John Petrucci is one of my all-time guitar heroes for many, many years. It's an honor to break down his technique like this for you. If you want to know more about building guitar speed, especially after you get the basic positioning in place and you got your tension control in place, what do you do? How do you actually practice to build speed? And how do you do this if you're sick and tired of everybody telling you to start slow and gradually build up speed? If you know that this approach isn't always the best way to practice, I wanna show you a different way to build speed that doesn't require any slow practice. And I'll show it to you for free. If you wanna check it out, hit the link in the description box below and check it out. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you're notified every time I upload new videos just like this for you. This is Mike Filipov, guitar practice expert from practiceguitarnow.com. I'll see you next time.